everyone, my name is James Feeney. Welcome to or back to my channel. Today I am here to talk about the extremely vague and broad topic of tradition. Bear with me, I am tying this all into what I would say my channel is about. So we're talking about tradition as it pertains to one's spiritual path and practice, as it pertains to potentially your, uh, your paradigms in terms of magic and your faith or religion, if you have one, uh, a set of beliefs. So it all is intertwined. This is going to be a bit of a ramble, but I'm hoping that we're getting at something and just starting a dialogue about the idea of tradition. And I would say, I would say, ha yeah, having that dialogue, understanding one, the importance of it, two, the power I would say that it holds, and the the almost con the negative connotations that I think a lot of us tie in to a word like that and how it has kind of been warped into something that is maybe less welcome or unwelcome by uh, a good number of people, uh, myself formally being one of those people, and that is partially why I'm speaking about this now. Uh, I will say that this is something that's been on my mind a bit lately, especially being home with my family, so I think a lot of us tie our first memories of what tradition means to our, our early childhood, potentially things with, uh, most of the time, experiences that we might have had with our family, our family group, uh, whatever that may mean for you. Things maybe like holidays and gatherings and uh, really those, those ritualized experiences that were routine, say like, for example, if you celebrate Christmas or you celebrated Christmas as a child, that would be maybe a tradition to get together with your family and do X, Y, and Z on that given day. Maybe you went to, to church. Maybe a tradition for you was on Hanukkah, you go to your grandmother's house or something like that. So a lot of our, a lot of us may tie tradition as an idea and our first experiences of it to those early childhood memories, which is also sometimes, uh, I think a lot of times we, uh, there are harsh, harder times tied in with those traditions that we maybe don't resonate with now. They are uh, times that uh, that we now look back on and uh, are reasons for some of the shadow, the shadow aspects that we have, those deep ingrained unconscious uh, feelings that we don't quite realize that have an impact on our, on our lives now. And we may be averse to certain things that were uh, a part of, a part of as in tied into tradition uh, in, during our childhood. And when I say shadow, I really mean it in that ingrained unconscious form, not necessarily negative. Uh, just as I would say in a more, if we're speaking on the person who really coined the term shadow, Jung and his definition of shadow, it's not inherently negative at all, although there can be negative shadow. Uh, it just really does mean that it is hidden, it's underneath, it's, in, it's ingrained, we can't access it really with our conscious minds, and so it's been instilled in us, and I think that a lot of those things can be traced back to to childhood in the way that I would say our first memories of tradition might be. Now, if you're watching this channel or you're at all, uh, yeah, if you're watching this channel, I would say that there's a, a decent chance that you engage in, say, spiritual or magical practices that are a bit outside of the norm. Um, outside of the norm, as in any magical practice, I think is somewhat, to some degree, in most societies and cultures considered outside of the norm, uh, whether or not they are accepted to varying degrees or celebrated is, is another story in and of itself. But um, yeah, so a lot of, say, maybe our beliefs, uh, my beliefs at least now, don't really tie in well with those first ideas of tradition. In fact, they, they contradict, they uh, create friction. Uh, there are some some negative memories and connotations tied to what those traditions meant in terms of, say, being associated with various religious practices that I no longer hold now. Those beliefs are not the beliefs that I hold now, and maybe I even have some some ill, uh, some, some memories that are not so pleasant in, in connection to that uh, religious background, upbringing, ex those experiences, and, and how and what they tried to ingrain in me and my journey moving outside of that or beyond it as I grew. And so um, I've recently just been pondering the idea of tradition just because 
I, I have a lot of traditions with my family and I'm home with my family. And one big one that we say have, that we see, that we have now is really watching Jeopardy at seven o'clock. And I really wanna start to focus on what tradition can be because I think that a lot of us will tie it to those large, really grand, uh, I don't, I don't know how, not performative, but they're, they're these massive occasions and that's what we're tying the idea of tradition to. But I think tradition is something that can pervade our everyday lives and actually probably does. I mean, if you say every Friday you get together with the girls and you have some wine, um, I mean, that's something that if it weren't quarantine, maybe I would do with my friends, but say that's something you do. That's a that is a tradition that you formed with them if uh, every year on your birthday, you and one of your close friends who doesn't really live by by you exchange these uh, these almost like ritualized little messages. That's a tradition. So there are so many traditions that we can have that we're constantly creating that we are using to to enrich our lives that I think that the idea of a tradition could use a little bit of a revamp or uh, a reevaluation on part of all of us. And I, for one, really value the idea of tradition and the power that it can imbue my life with, and I think it can imbue others' lives with. Um, it's a powerful thing, just as, say, we use magic, and we'll use magic in, say, a ritualized sense, where we create space, where we're within a sacred space, and we carve out that time, we do something very intentionally, all of the movements, all of the objects, all of the, the, the thought process, it's intentional, so in that way it's ritualized. I think that tradition, is to some extent ritualized. You are creating a ritual of action, of uh, creating something in your external world, whether, and mostly what what dictates a tradition as opposed to just a, a singular act is that it is routine. So we're doing this in a repetitive fashion. Um, and I think there's something even magical about that. I think a lot of the time, for example, with spells and mantras and um, thoughts that we want to manifest, there is a power in repetition. And I think that, for example, in tradition, repeating uh, sacred acts with others that we care about is really powerful. It's a, it's a, it's a love spell in a way, um, a love spell for ourselves. It's a love spell that binds a group, whether that be family or friends. And so I think that, for example, a card that I really think of um, when I think of the word tradition and how polarizing the word tradition can be and the, the dark feelings it can engender and bring up in those past uh, potentially traumas even, I think of the Hierophant. He is, I would say, the single card that I like to tie to the word tradition and a card that I've had a lot of difficulty with in the past and I know many of us have now. Uh, coming, Having come full circle and worked with the Hierophant, as I know many also have, and kudos to you if you've done that work and you had a hard time with this card and you've taken the time. Uh, so there is that positive side. What about tradition? What about things, tried and true practices um, is beneficial and positive? What about it isn't so dogmatic? Um, so of course, dogmatic traditions that are maybe tied in with religions, religious, religious beliefs that we don't hold, uh, those are ones that we want to maybe discard and discount to some extent, at least in, in so far as we don't want them to damage us now or have hold over us. I think if we are viewing ourselves as potential almost slaves to tradition in a sense, that it is having the power over us, um, feeling as though we are forced to participate in, say, a tradition, that is when we are almost quote-unquote beholden to it. And when we are, say, the creators of tradition and we have traditions that work for us to further our love, to further um, the ties that we have with others, to further a bond with an activity that we have, that's when tradition is working for us. That's when we're really like alchemizing it, making it this happy uh, transmutative process. And I think that what we want here is really to see the Hierophant in his light aspect, in that positive aspect, where tradition is working for us, where we can see the beneficence and power of things that are uh, tried, and tried and tested, um, so to speak. So that's my thought on that. And recently I have been getting the, I've been getting a lot of earth or 
uh, in the Thoth deck, Disc, Disc cards, and I have continually gotten the Prince of Discs, which would translate in Rider Waite Smith to the Knight of Pentacles. And so he got me thinking about, say, the connection of tradition in terms of um, our everyday mundane lives and caused me to say maybe take a new approach at looking at things like watching Jeopardy at seven or things that say I did as a child that sculpted me in a really positive way, traditions that were not so much tied to, to religious and dogmatic beliefs that I don't hold today. But things like my dad taking my sister and I on uh, every Saturday out for all the errands that he would run because he didn't want to get a babysitter and we became friends with the lady at the dry cleaner who would uh, run around with us and he would take us to the park and we'd make sandwiches. Uh, things like that that were traditions and I really tie all of those to the element of earth. They were all uh, personifications, exemplifications of of love, of bonding, of of really positive energy in a practical, mundane, tangible form. And I think that what tradition really gets at is just that it's it's an action. It's a series of successive actions. It's an orchestrated event almost in a sense. That's what makes it sacred. That's why we call it a tradition. And so uh, I think that that earthly element of that slow methodical uh, approach that say the knight, the knight of pentacles or the prince of discs takes in carving out and deciding that he's on a path and that he's going to do certain things and that all of his actions are very detailed, they're scrupulous, they are, <laughs> they're prudent. And so there's something to his methodology and that archetype that I think is inextricable from ideas of tradition. I, I find the word tradition now to be a really magical word, actually. I find that, for example, on the new moon, I have a tradition of working with my matron. I have traditions of journaling about certain topics at certain times. Uh, I find that, for example, the tradition of opening the fireplace and that hearth aspect in the fall is, is really magical, and that closing it up is uh, signifying, say, this opening of the 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 wilderness of the outside of the coming back of of life and greenery and that there's this some um, there's this magical significance there um there's <laughs> there's magic in the tradition of my my pool being opened and what that signifies in terms of the year and say the the fun times to come with friends and family um as it gets warmer and how we can enjoy that outside space and so to me now the word tradition is really magical. It's something I hold near and dear and that I seek out. I'm always looking to foster and create new and wonderful traditions or to even evaluate my life in uh, through a lens that highlights traditions that are there but aren't even called traditions. Um, so now I love to really dig through um, my weeks and months and see what might be considered a tradition, what might be considered a tradition. And I think by choosing to look at it that way, choosing to see it as a tradition and knowing it for what it is, I'm adding magic. I've shifted my perspective. I've chosen to take that time, that repetitive, ritualized, performative uh, gathering or act and make it one that is magical through, through just a title change. Titles hold power, it's a word. Words hold power, um, I think many of us will agree. And so that was just really what I wanted to say, the idea of tradition. And I want to start a dialogue just in that I would love to hear others' experiences with traditions. What the word tradition, for example, you watching this, what does tradition mean to you? What are your connections with it? Do you hold and harbor negative feelings when you think of the word tradition? What has your journey been in terms of what that means to you? Have you, say... Uh, started at one point where it wasn't such a positive feeling to, to even bring up that word and you've uh, claimed it for your own and made it into something new? Are you creating new traditions for yourself to really reinvent what that word can mean for you and trying to get it to work for you as, of, as opposed to feeling like you work underneath it, like it's an oppressive force? Uh, there's a lot of complexity, I think, that goes into tradition. There's a lot of 
uh, depth and power there. There's a lot of history with the word tradition. I think the word tradition itself is, it connotes history. It's something that takes place over time, over long spans of time in a, a repetitive fashion. And in that same vein, that's that that means that there has to be some history to it. There has to be a past to it for it to be a tradition. Uh, you can start a tradition today in a moment, but it it really isn't a tradition until it's it's been done more than once. Um, I'm not sure if there's an actual definition of how many times a certain thing needs to be done before it can be considered a tradition. I would say two. By that second time, it is now officially a tradition, and I would say it's even a tradition the first time if you decide to call it that and you know that you're going to do it a second time, but having said that, yes. So uh, I think traditions are really important and magical. I really value them, and I've been taking stock of the traditions that I hold near and dear lately, and I'd love to know some of your, your wonderful favorite traditions, things that you have and hold uh, and really value. And I'd also like to know about your connection and ideas in terms of the word tradition, because it is a loaded word, but it can be loaded in a good way. Uh, loaded doesn't necessarily have to be negative. So like and subscribe if this endless ramble <laughs> was something that you enjoyed. And until next time, I hope you're all well and 